All right, guys, uh, I'm finishing right now. So I'm trying to explain that when you love him, guys, when you love him, you do whatever it takes, you understand, to keep him. Why? Because of the love that you have for him. You know, my Lord speaks uh, words that just I sit and I'm like, oh, damn, my king, you're too good. You understand? He says, I do everything he says because I love the father. Why? Loving daddy, guys, means that you're going to have to punish yourself. You see, guys, Jesus, Jesus comes and is put in the flesh that is like mine that is like yours meaning jesus is put in a flesh that seeks sex outside marriage jesus is put in a flesh that loves money jesus is put in a flesh that loves the things of the world jesus guys is put in the flesh that loves riches jesus guys is put in the flesh that wants to do its own will yet spiritually he is alive in other words, he only wants to do daddy's will, but he's put in the flesh. So Jesus, he, if he says that I love him that much, it means Jesus must punish his flesh. It means that Jesus must subdue his flesh. I don't know, guys, if you understand what I'm trying to say. So when you love him that much, you want to show him, listen, daddy, I love you so much. I'm going to stop doing these things. Why? Because I love you so much, you know, and you stop sinning. You know, guys, we often think that, when we're dealing with that man upstairs, oh, he loves us so much, he can't take us to hell. You haven't read the word. Come to me, I'll teach you. Come to me, I'll teach you. You know, people are so emotional with things that are not even emotional. You know, you go to funerals and you hear these nonsensical pastors lying through their teeth saying that these people who have passed on are going to heaven. And I'm like, which heaven are they talking about? You guys have open churches and you mix together the word of God with your emotions, with your feelings, with your beliefs. And you are saying that these people are going to enter the kingdom. How? How? Jesus preached a specific message that if you want to make it to his kingdom, walk like this, do this, don't do this. Do this, don't do this. And then you go to church, you find that they will say, they tell you that there is no head. You find that they will tell you to pray to this thing called Rosar and kiss statues there. You'll find that they will tell you that get saved after that, love money and things of the world and riches, and you are forever forgiven. You understand? You find that you go to church, they tell you that God works together with ancestors. Obviously, what they are preaching is not in line with the way. Do you understand? Then when these people pass on, they say, she's gone to heaven. Who? Who's gone to heaven? If this person was listening to your teachings, and I know you, you, the beliefs of your church, obviously this person couldn't, couldn't have even, guys, ah, I'm telling you, you know, so we usually become so emotional about things that are not emotional. Jesus gave us a specific journey. You do this, you do that, you don't do this, you don't do that. You'll make it to my place. Meaning he's giving us a direction. He's giving us a route. Amount of tears and crocodile tears you, you, you hear in churches, people crying there, thinking that that man can be bribed with their crocodile tears. I sit and I'm like, human beings can be so foolish sometimes. It's a specific journey. That's why he says, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter my kingdom. But only he who does the will. I will deny you plainly. Why? You practice lawlessness. Meaning you did not obey my commands. You understand? So right now, in order for you to stop being emotional about these things, let me be clear. Let me be frank. If you know of his commands that are written in the word. I'm not talking about church beliefs. Guys, let us not waste each other's time here by speaking about church beliefs. I don't have time. I don't have time. You understand? I'm pretty sure you also don't have time. You understand? The 15 minutes I spent here, I'm pretty sure it's too much for you. So let us not waste each other's time. You know, let us not speak about church beliefs. They are useless. They are not taking you to heaven. I don't know where pastors are taking people, but they are not taking people to where Jesus is going. If you if you mix your beliefs with Jesus' beliefs, I need you to know that. Now, guys, if you don't obey any of his laws that are written in the word, and you know them, and you don't obey them, let me be frank, if you know them, though, and you've been disobeying him knowingly, meaning on purpose, let me be frank, you don't have Jesus. It might sound nice for you to hear that you, God listens to you. Let me be frank, he's not listening to you. Why? He cannot behold evil. That is his nature. 
that is his nature you know guys people have their own beliefs about what evil is i'll make an example you know in my country you know when people go for this license thing in car license driver's license many a times they bribe in order to get it many a times they bribe it's just a well-known thing you understand so if you go there without that brown envelope believe me you'll come back a failure like me a, a good failure a good failure you need to bribe in order to actually get it that's just the way things are unfortunately it's just the way things are is it like that for other countries i don't know I've, i haven't been outside but many guys i'm just trying to explain something here so i was speaking to this instructor who was teaching me how to drive so he said to me you know what uh you're going to have to give me such a such amount and i'm like what are you talking about i've already paid you for these uh lessons and it's like you're not going to pass <laughs> and i was like what are we talking about you've been teaching me are you telling me that you've been teaching me rubbish all this time he says no i've been teaching you good things and you are very fast you are very fast auto theft will be good for you <laughs> And then I was like, so if I'm fast and good, so why do I have to give you this money? He says, you're not going to get that license. You need to have a brown envelope. And I was like, but I can't do that, you know. So he was uh, asking me, are you a Christian? I was like, yes, I'm a Christian. It's not something I go about, you know, telling people because uh, being a Christian it's nowadays is just not anything they're making because people are doing whatever they want to do and call themselves Christians. So I don't really talk about it. So he says to me, but we, I also... Uh, instruct Christians and I teach a lot of Christians and they do bribe, they give that brown envelope and they, they pass because of that, because God's not going to help you. And I was like, yeah, he's not going to help me. <laughs> so it's like, you, you you should give me that brown envelope. And I said, I'm not doing it. And then he started being serious. He says, listen, because he was an older man, you know, so I'm tiny built. So for for people, sometimes they, they look at me as as, as like, being young i'm not young i'm very old so he was telling me saying you know what listen uh you are not killing anyone you are not stealing money from anyone you are simply helping yourself so you can bribe so i looked at him and i said to him very serious very serious i said i appreciate your advice but you see there is a kingdom of heaven and that kingdom is jesus's kingdom he has his own rules if he says we shouldn't bribe, then if I want to make it to his kingdom, it's okay if I want to make it somewhere else. But if I want to make it to his kingdom, I need to play by his rules. You understand? But I won't be killing anyone. I won't be stealing from anyone. I'll actually be giving someone my money. But it's bribing in the eyes of Jesus. You understand? And that is not allowed in the kingdom of heaven. You understand? So he looked at me and said, mm, I never thought of it like that. I said, yeah, it doesn't matter, but we we just explain, you know, we we're just, uh, just having a conversation, you know what I mean? So what I'm trying to say, guys, is that sometimes we become so emotional about things that don't even need emotions in it. You simply have to be specific. You understand? You look at what Jesus is saying, you know, because you go to church, you find these pastors when people have passed on and say, oh, she's going to heaven. Who is going to heaven? Guys, I've lost a lot. I've lost a lot of people I love. But I will not sit here and say they are in heaven. I'm not going to do that. If they did not obey that man upstairs laws, they can't make it to Jesus' kingdom. It's Jesus' kingdom now. It's not your kingdom, is it? Mm -mm. It's Jesus' kingdom. So if he says, if you, if you don't do this, you won't make it here. You won't make it. Emotions won't do. Emotions won't do. You know, so sometimes people don't want me to speak in such places because they were like, mm -mm, these people are grieving. You should be comforting them with lies. Ah, ah, it's better I don't speak. It's better, it, guys, it's better I don't speak. Because if you want me to, guys, if you want me to comfort you with lies, I, I'm going to be standing in front of Jesus one day and you, you want him to, to deny me because he's going to deny me. You understand? So it's things like that. We become so emotional about things that don't even need emotions. If you go to church, churches are preaching their own things now. They are not in line. In other words, they are saying, listen, we don't believe what Jesus is saying. We have our own beliefs here. Yes, they carry Bibles. They have guys, that's what they're actually saying. We don't believe Jesus' teachings. Yes, he said that, but we have our own beliefs here. Yet we're carrying his Bible. And you sit and you're like, mm, 
what a pity what a pity you know what i mean but what i'm trying to explain guys is that when you're dealing with that man upstairs never be emotional be logical he's a logical man you see guys if if um uh, if on that side lawyers were 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 needed, I'll actually be a lawyer. On that side, though, not this side. It wouldn't help. It wouldn't help being being a lawyer. This side. Ah, those people are busy lying through their teeth today, defending liars and all these wrong people. And you know, you must be a good liar in order to be a good lawyer. So I wouldn't be a good lawyer because I'm scared of Jesus. You know, lying through my teeth. That would be a huge problem for me. You know what I mean? But on that side, guys, I would. Why? Ah, guys, I've learned that man's kingdom very well. Because, you see, when you're dealing with him, emotions aside, emotions aside, it's law. You know, right now, if I fall dead and I stand in front of my Lord and my Lord judges me, I'll be standing and looking at him in the eyes with, you know, his eyes blazing with fire. I'll be looking at him and I'll be like, yeah, judge me. <laughs> Yeah, judge me. Why? I know the law. <laughs> guys, I read the word. You see, guys, the word is actually the most important book for me. Guys, the Bible, it's the most important book for me. You can rob me in any other thing. Mm -mm. The Bible, no. <laughs> no one robs me there. Why? I read it myself. When I realized pastors were busy fooling me, I said to myself, Nini, no one is going to rob you. No one is going to rob me, guys, and I mean it. Believe me, when I'm, oh, guys, when I say that, you understand? So I'm trying to say that when you're dealing with him, make sure you understand the law. Why? You're dealing with a lawyer. Jesus is a judge. Guys, he is called our advocate. He says that children do not sin. If you do sin, there is blood. And we have an advocate who speaks on your behalf. What is an advocate, guys? It's a lawyer, right? So Jesus is a lawyer. So when you're dealing with, with him, you're dealing with someone who's done law. You're dealing with someone who, guys, who understands law like every... Guys, ah, I'm telling you. And when you're dealing with daddy, you're dealing with a judge. Obviously, a judge knows law more than the lawyer. But in this case, both of them, they do the same thing. You understand? So when you're dealing with him, that's why Jesus was telling the disciples when they were asking him, Peter was asking him, we have left everything to follow you. What is there for us? You know, because Peter realized that as long as I'm following Jesus, it doesn't seem like he's going to bless me here on earth. This guy doesn't have even a penny, doesn't have anything. So he can't give me anything here on earth. So he was asking Jesus, we've been following you. What is there for us? And Jesus says, at the renewal of all things, you will be sitting on 12 thrones of Israel, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? So Peter, James, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Philip, you know, Nathaniel, all those guys, they will actually be judging the tribes of Israel. Because some of them passed on and they only knew of the law, of that old law. But Peter won't be judging me because it's going to be busy judging those people. Maybe it's you who's going to be judging me. That is if I'm spiritually dead when I leave this place. You're going to be judging me because you will be understanding this law. But if I'm spiritually alive, I won't be judged. I'll just go and get my crown. You know what I mean? So I'm sure, guys, you understand all of those things. So I read the word very well. Why? I knew that I was dealing, I'm actually dealing with people who did law. You understand? While I don't like the law of this place, this nonsensical law, I love that law, though. I love that law, though. You understand? So it's things like that. I want you to know that his eyes are too holy to behold to behold evil, you understand? So if you are dealing with him, make sure that you know the law. And if you are trying to be a scammer, if you are trying to be smart, if you are trying to be cunning, make sure you understand the law and you know how you're going to defend yourself. Because once you know the truth, I'm telling you, once you know, you see guys, I love my family members, every one of them. And let's say, for example, I make it to my Lord's kingdom spiritually alive and they don't. And if one is standing in front of me, I'll say, you go to hell. You did not obey the law now. You knew the law. But if one of them got saved and then passed on after that, immediately before knowing the law, oh, well, you, 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 you did not know the law. You sinned, uh, granted, but you did not know the law. So to heaven, you, you know, to the kingdom, you enter. You understand? So it's things like that. You need to know the law when you're dealing with him. So guys, his eyes are too holy to behold evil. Do not be emotional when it comes to him. Be logical because he's logical. If you love him, you're going to stop sinning and not continue in sin. Why? You love him. You want to 